All right, today we're gonna to talk about the new VTX tables in Betaflight 4.1, and how you can set them up in five minutes. Of course, with VTX tables, this only matters if you're controlling your video transmitter with your flight controller, setting your band, your channel, your power level through the OSD or Lua scripts. The first thing we have to do if you're going to do that is you have to go into your ports tab and then either pick uh, whatever your VTX is supporting for its protocol. There's two protocols out there. One is the TBS uh, Smart Audio. The other is the IRC Tramp. To know what you would need there, you'd have to go to the manufacturer's page, go to the literature you bought the VTX with and see whatever it uses. In this example, we're using one that uses TBS Smart Audio. So go ahead and pick that and hit save and reboot. Next, we're going to go down to the video transmitter. This page will then display um, what you see here, but it's going to be blank. As you can see in the instructions up here, you're going to hit this page. That will take you to this page on the Betaflight Wiki. And the easiest thing to do is just download one of these templates that you can load into the configurator. Now, the obvious question is next is, okay, what smart audio version do I have? One, two, or 2.1? I don't even know. What we have here for an example is a Race Day Quads Mach 3. If you go on their literature page, they don't list what smart audio version. They just list that it's smart audio. So to figure that out, we can go back into the configurator, go into the black box tab, and under the black box tab, and don't worry, we don't need to create a log and do a flight and all that jazz. All we have to do is make sure we select smart audio right here. Uh, and just some settings up here, doesn't really matter. And then hit save and reboot. From there, we're gonna make sure we have expert mode enabled. Then we're going to go to the sensors tab, make sure to ch uncheck the gyro, accelerometer, all these options up here, just have debug selected. And we're gonna look here at the X value. This will tell us what smart audio version is. Now, to actually read the VTX, we have to go ahead and plug it in with LiPo. So use your smoke stopper, make sure the props are off, whatever you need to do there. So we're gonna have it plugged in, looking at the sensors tab here, we're gonna plug in the quad. And you will see this jumps up. Now in my case, it jumped up to 200. So that means I'm on Smart Audio 2.0. If it jumps up to 210, that means Smart Audio version 2.1. If it jumps up to 100, that means Smart Audio version 1.0. So great, now that we know that, we can go back to this website here, right click on this page, hit save link as, slide back over to Betaflight, go into the video transmitter page, hit load from file, pick the file, and you're almost ready to go. Next, we're gonna pick our band and channel. So I'm gonna do race band, I'm gonna do channel one, and power level. Okay, so I have 25, 250. Uh, if I go back to my race day quads, that does not exactly align. It's a 25, 200, 600, and 1,000 you can see here. So its options and settings are different than what the standard smart audio has. This is where, VTX tables is pretty nice. So I can come back over to Betaflight and I can come down here to the bottom and you can see I have another option. So I'm gonna to toggle this up to four and here I can do 1K. This is alphanumeric and be up to three digits, not four. So you can't type in a thousand, but you could do 1K or something other like that. Put three here for this would be the third setting. And I'm gonna change this from 500 to 600. What's really nice about this is now in my OSD, I will see 200, 600, 1K for settings. I don't have to like interpret like 400, 600, and 800, really a thousand and all that mess. Next, I'll hit the drop down here. I'm gonna go ahead with 600 and save on that. Now, the next time I power up my VTX with my flight controller, it's gonna set it to race band one, channel one, power level 600. For the other options here, go ahead and check out the tips here this is you know if you're going to be enabling and using pit mode if you want it when it's entering in the pit mode to be on a certain frequency and low power on disarm so it puts on the low power mode that's going to vary based on your vtx that's just using the smart audio 2.0 protocol language so if your vtx supports that kind of stuff then go ahead and use that if it doesn't then don't. The other thing you need to know just in brief down here at the bottom, at these numbers really don't matter if you have factory checked here. When factory is checked down here, in my case, it's just going to use channel 
R1. See, I have it set to race band, channel one, and it's going to use whatever frequencies pre-programmed in to the VTX. So it's going to use, again, the factory here, R1, R2, R3, R4. So these numbers down here don't matter. Now, if I want it to use a specific value, then I would uncheck the factory setting here, and then it will use the specific value I have set in this table here. While on the subject of ETX tables, I want to talk about a couple more of these debug mode values. As we talked about here, debug mode zero is the device version, and then also the operating mode. For more on operating mode, I would go ahead and see the TBS protocol documentation. I'll put a link down to that in the video description. Debug mode one is the channel, which is really the band and channel combined together. That's why it's 32. That means band, race band is three, and two is actually channel one because all computer stuff starts with zero. Debug number two is the frequency. Now, when you're communicating with your flight controller to tell it the band and channel, it does not gonna update debug number two with the frequency because it's just getting the frequency from the VTX's internal frequency table. So, you know, you're either communicating one or the other. It's either debug one or debug two. It's never both at the same time. So let's run through a couple examples. If I go back to the video transmitter page and I change this from race band to band A and then go to channel one and then I'll hit, hit save here. Now I'm back on the sensors tab and I plug the VTX back in. You're gonna see this 32 change to zero. And of course that's conforming to band A channel one, which happens to be slot zero. Again, with computer stuff, it all starts at zero. If I change this up to channel eight, we should expect to see seven on the sensors tab. And indeed we do. So you just hit save and you can go right back and see that. If I go change this to race band and change it to channel one, we should expect to see 32. Go to the sensors tab and yes, we do. Now, if I wanted to communicate in frequency versus band and channel, I can just go down here and uncheck these boxes and then it won't use the frequency tables in the VTX, it will actually use this table right here. So I actually have to make the change in the channel here for it to push that out to the VTX. So I'm gonna change this to channel eight, and now we should see the, VT, the frequency change to 59.17, hit save. And with the power cycle of the VTX, you will see it change up to 59.17. So that's one thing you have to note, to change in between the two modes, you have to power cycle the VTX or it won't actually switch until you do that. Going back again to the transmitter page, you can see if I change this now back to race band channel one, it should go from 59.17 to 56.58. Hit save, go to the sensors tab, 56.58. Last but not least, for the power level, you can see I'm on 600 milliwatts if that is power bank three. So if I change that down to 25 milliwatts, hit save and I go to the sensors tab, you should see this go to bank one. Okay, everybody, thanks, and I hope this helped.